Today's video is not as esoteric as the other ones. Thought I'd make a more. Pre Did you find it? No. Yeah, we're just looking for some spray bottles right now because Dave is building a new. Or not a new building, but he's upgrading his computer right now. He's, so he wants to dust it out. But, anyways, um. Today's video is not so uh, esoteric, it's more practical actually. It's about, um, it's just a, a webinar I did to share my uh, eBay uh, retail arbitrage strategy. Uh, it's something I learned online and uh, it's pretty straightforward. Essentially what you're doing is um, using eBay and Amazon to drop ship items and uh, make some money. So I just wanted to, I actually had a webinar for friends and family who were interested online and decided to record it and post it on YouTube so other people who might be interested can check it out as well. It's a really great method to make money. You don't need a lot of capital because you're not holding inventory and you also don't have as much risk because you're not holding inventory so you don't have, th you don't have things like that to worry about. So um, just uh, check out the video and uh, if, if you actually have any tips or tricks to share that would be also be good. If you also um, have some feedback on the webinar because it's the first time I ever did one of these, so feedback is also welcome. Just put it in the comment uh, below. Did you find it? No. Yeah, he's still looking for that uh, air spray bottle. Okay, and uh, check out the video, comment on what you think about it. I'll be doing more webinars and posting some more how-to, more practical stuff on business and what I've learned and what I think uh, I wish I would have learned too. So just check it out. Okay guys, so welcome to the webinar on eBay dropshipping. This is something I decided to do for people because, well for a long time I had a struggle making money online, wasting a lot of time finding stupid things to do that really were not worthwhile at all. Until I actually found a, a ebook, paid $20 for it, because it was only $20 I was just like what the hell, might as well try it out. And it was about a uh, drip drop shipping and took the steps in the book and I was able to make I didn't make a ridiculous amount of money at the time I was doing other things but I was able to make $500 in my first two months just doing it at about an hour a day so then I, st I started to see more of a potential in it and started to do it more and uh, turns out it's pretty scalable you can do it as much as you want and really sky's the limit to it and now it's the majority of my income so what exactly is dropshipping dropshipping is just a method of doing online sales where you take you don't take inventory but you you essentially list items that uh, a supplier of yours would have and then you just ship it out to them when you get orders so for example if I get an order on my eBay store I don't actually hold any inventory. I just pay the supplier, and then they ship it out to the the. Um... Yo, Richard, who else is in the call? Oh, Chris. Yeah, who else is in the car? I mean, the call. Oh, it's just me and you right now. But I'm just recording it for other people. Oh shit! Sorry, man. Oh, it's all good. Okay, I'll just listen. Yeah, sure. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask me at the end. So that's essentially drop shipping. You just it's just a way of doing sales online without holding inventory. So when you get orders, people pay you and then you pay the supplier and the supplier ships directly to the customer. This way you have lower risk because you're not holding any inventory. You don't have to put up money up front until you get the order. As well, because the supplier ships directly to the customer, you're also saving on shipping costs. So it's it's a pretty win-win-win. Uh, your customer gets the item they want. You get, you get paid by the customer, and the supplier also wins because obviously they want to make as many sales as possible. So the the method that I use and that I learned when I was trying to make money online is the Amazon to eBay method. So Amazon is one of the biggest stores right now in the U.S. It's not as popular in Canada but they're really big in the states so they have a lot of lot of items it's not just books anymore they have furniture they have everything they even have food on here and pet food software it's literally like a like a wall online walmart now in the states in canada it's not as big but 
in the states it's huge and everyone goes on Amazon to do most of their shopping so the idea is to find items that are selling on eBay and even though I'm in Canada I use eBay.com and Amazon.com because there's more sales volume and there's more traffic there's still not as much traffic in Amazon.ca so what I do is I look for items that are selling on eBay that I can get for cheaper on Amazon and then list it onto eBay and I'll, I'll get into that a bit more but first I just want to go over the requirements of doing this so first off you're gonna need to have a PayPal account a PayPal account this is just the one I made not too long ago it's pretty straightforward you just want to have it completely set up though so once you sign up for a PayPal account you should first off always sign up for a personal one there's no point in having a business one actually there's really not much of a difference I, I think the business one you just have to pay monthly but for drop shipping it's unnecessary to do that so once you have your PayPal account it's gonna ask you to complete these steps and mine are actually not completed because this is just a new account I use for demonstration but first you create the account you want to link a bank account to your PayPal and your PayPal can be a Canadian PayPal account and it will work on eBay.com so that's not something you don't have to worry about you can create a Canadian PayPal account you don't need to have American information you can use your Canadian information like your address and credit cards to make a eBay.com and a PayPal.com account so once you create the account you want to link a bank account confirm your email add a uh, Visa card and confirm a mobile number the bank account bank account um, you can use any bank account TD RBC you just want to click link a bank account and choose which account you want to use and just follow the steps I'm not gonna do it right now though because this is just a, a demo account but it's, it's a very straightforward you just do that then you want to also link a credit card and link your phone number this is because there's a lot of uh, fraud that can happen online so PayPal has been stepping up their security and you want to set up all these things before you create your eBay account it actually gives you a higher listing limit on eBay because eBay actually limits the amount of items you can list on a monthly basis if you have a fully created PayPal account it's much easier to start your dropshipping business on the right foot so again the, f the first thing is to create a PayPal account and it's very straightforward it, it'll usually take a day or two for you to confirm your bank account that's the longest process and once that's all set up you want to set up your eBay account so now on eBay uh, you can make your account on eBay.ca or eBay.com the sites themselves are different but if you create one on the Canadian one or the American one you can use them on both sites so it doesn't matter once you've got your account created you want to link your PayPal account now once again make sure that your PayPal account is fully set up this one is not set up right now but make sure it's fully set up before you link it so to link the account you just go to sign up and it'll ask you to sign in again and there'll be a uh, steps to linking the account see so it asks you for your information date of birth I'm not gonna fill this out because this is a, also a demo eBay account whoops but you just follow the steps it's very straightforward oh sorry that was I clicked sign up but link is over here just go to link my account and yeah it'll ask you to just to log into your PayPal and link it up and th those are the requirements to getting started it's really simple you just need your PayPal account and your eBay account so the idea once again is to find items that are selling on eBay find them for cheaper on Amazon and then you make the difference so once your PayPal and your eBay account is set up you're pretty close to getting started there is one tip I do recommend for people it's that you shouldn't start listing items from Amazon right away because eBay has become very strict on their selling policies they don't like it when people sell things sell things they think are high risk right away so you should avoid things let me just make a note you should avoid things like software electronics brand name items like uh, 
as seen on TV items. Some example would be like P90X gym equipment. Definitely avoid um, elite, illegal items 100%. You should never be listing those like drugs, weapons. And you actually should not list any adult material on eBay as well because PayPal does not accept payments for adult materials. So you can also get banned for that. Now the reason why you do get banned is usually because you're listing these items in the beginning. eBay has a 90 day new account status which is not visible to you. Like if you log in with a new account, it's nowhere it's going to say 90 days. But it's, it's something that they use internally to check to see if you are going to be listing any of these things. So in the first 90 days, your account is most sensitive to getting banned or even um, suspended temporarily. So the first 90 days, you want to be careful not to list any software, electronic, big brand name items because eBay um, doesn't want, doesn't know you. So they might think that you're listing counterfeit brand name items. Also things like, like really high end stuff like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, things like that. Uh, and of course, illegal drugs, weapons, adult material. If you take payments for those on PayPal, you, they might actually hold your money on PayPal, which is worse than getting suspended on eBay. So as a caution, don't list these things in the beginning of your 90 days, especially these things at the bottom. You should just avoid listing them in general. It's a really fast way to get banned on eBay. So now that you have your PayPal and eBay set up, what's the first step to actually doing the process? Well, before we get into that, I highly recommend you actually list some things from your house. I, I like to list um, magic cards. Like, there are a bunch of trading cards, collectible cards that I have from my childhood. And I just start off the auction at one cent. So you want to just list things around the house and try to sell it at, as cheap as possible and as quickly as possible so that you get some feedback. Uh, once you get feedback, eBay will actually also um, put less... Uh, less surveillance on your account as well because they see that you're a, a, a good seller who's not disappointing their customers so just find random things in your house or if you really don't have anything just go to the uh go to like a, a toy store and get some magic cards or Yu-Gi-Oh cards and just buy a pack of them they're like five dollars and then you just list them each individual card for like one cent on your ebay account ship them out really fast just go to like canada post get some envelopes and some uh get some stamps, ship them out really fast, and uh, that's pretty much it. You just ship them out when they get orders in, and you're not not—you're actually going to lose money doing this. You'll probably lose like $10, but uh, after you sell about 20 cards, I say, you should have about 10 feedback, 5 feedback in the least you'll have. At most, you'll get like 15, but not everyone, as you'll do eBay, you'll find that not everyone always gives feedback either. So just to reiterate the steps, you want to have your PayPal, your eBay, and you want to, here I'll just add this in, you want to list random things, or you want, you can get some cheap collectible cards and list those to get feedback very quickly. Now I'll also put mental skills as a requirement, because a lot of people who are dropshipping actually give up in the first month. Usually your sales from dropshipping are not going to come quickly in the first month. It's going to be super slow. My first sale was probably two weeks in, and that was after, that was me like listing every day for an hour. So it can get discouraging, but you just got to persevere and uh, just have faith in the process. Because it will work. It does work. It works for a lot of people. Also something that a lot of people say is like, oh, well, if everyone's dropshipping on eBay, how can I make money like isn't it the market saturated? The thing is, eBay is still growing, and uh, Amazon's growing too. So there's going to be more items for you to list, and there's also also going to be more customers. I think it's statistically, there's still only 50% of people in the states do their shopping online, and that number is increasing daily. So the market's only getting bigger, and if you do this drop shipping the right way, it doesn't really matter how many people are doing it. There's techniques you can use to always be a cut above the competition in terms of your listings as well. So it's not something you should worry about. It, it will cross your mind. You're going to get discouraged. 
day after day listing, not seeing too many sales. But you just have to hang in there and keep going at it. Because the sales will come and it's just a matter of patience. So actually, I'll just go through the process of listing the item right now. So let's say you want to list a magic card. Now eBay will show you this site, if this splash screen, if it's your first time listing. So it just says, uh, do you want to sell it yourself or do you want eBay to sell it for you? This is a new thing that they do. You don't want them to sell it for you. It costs more in fees. And you also have to, sh I think you have to ship the item to the eBay warehouse and they basically list it for you. So you just want to click no, I'll just sell it myself. And it says start a new listing. Now let's say I have a magic card, I have an MTG. So I just found, found like this magic card. So magic card, uh, let's say I have a, let me just grab an image. When you're actually listing your stuff around your house, you want to actually take pictures yourself and use those pictures because it's it makes it seem way more legit and it'll just sell a lot better. But just for this example, let's say I have a picture of a, a cancel. Let's say I have this magic card lying around my house. Oops. So this is my magic card. It's just lying around so I'm gonna sell it to get some quick feedback. And you know I'm, I'm a grown man so I don't need to play magic anymore. So you just want to make your title magic card cancel. Uh, you can put some abbreviations and think of what people might Search for Island Blue. And now eBay will give you a bunch of categories, so just choose the one you think fits yours. So mine's trading cards, magic the gathering. It's blue. And they are gonna ask you do you want the advanced listing format or the simple one? I always say go with the advanced one, it gives you way more control and options. And once again, list on ebay.com. You want to list on ebay.com, not .ca. .com has more volume. And I find it's just easier to use .com for some reason. The, the layout's way smoother. So here you just want to upload the picture that you that you took. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Okay, so there's the magic card. You just upload the photo. Oh, now this is actually something that might pop up. Your photo doesn't meet quality standards, and I'm gonna show you a quick trick. With this. You, this is this is really easy to work around with this. So you just want to edit this photo. So what I did was go to the photo, right click, edit, and it's gonna on Windows it automatically opens in Paint. On Max, I think it opens on uh, some other program. So what I do is I just literally stretch the size of the canvas, take the image and put it in the center, and save. And then I just re-upload, and you should not see that. Yeah, there. So the image quality issue arises if your image is smaller than 500 pixels by 500 but you can easily just edit that yourself by going to edit stretching out the canvas so that you see the canvas here you just stretch it out and then using the select tool just center your image to the center so this way you have a have a image that's bigger than 500 by 500 but you're not ruining the quality of this image by like stretching it out you don't have to you're not like doing this and making it look funny. You're just centering this and making the canvas around the image bigger. So that's a quick trick, but when you're listing stuff around your house, usually your cell phone camera will be a lot bigger than 500 by 500, so you won't see that issue. This is just a little tip that might help you. Okay, so you, you listed it. Bam. Title. You got your condition. New. It's asking you for a bunch of other things like item specifics. I usually just skip these, to be honest. Uh, some people do this. I don't. I haven't really tested it. If someone has experience testing it, let me know because honestly, I just skip that stuff. 
and they just want to put some details here like this is my near mint cancel magic card for auction thanks you can when you're just selling the stuff in your house you can just make it short, short and simple just say this is whatever uh, be sure to describe the item as accurately as possible and take the best pictures too because eBay offers their customers a protection plan where if you haven't described it properly and if you haven't if it doesn't look like what they got then they can return the item even if you say that there's no returns so make sure that your picture is solid and that your description is solid too if there's any flaws or or if you want to say that there's like a slight problem with it most people are like oh but it won't sell but it's better for you to write those problems here than the person returning the item to you because that's, that's going to be a hassle and a headache so just be very very dis well described for when you're selling things around your house to build that feedback because the better described it is the happier the customers will be and the more feedback you'll get so I just write that here and uh, you can set us so you can do an auction or a fixed price I just do an auction at one cent let's just lag in here This is something I notice happens on eBay sometimes, your price doesn't uh, go in. So in this case, just click uh, continue and it'll tell you you don't have a price and then usually it fixes itself. Yeah, so it says provide the information and then you can put the price and now it stays. There you go. And you put your PayPal account in here. This is not, obviously this is not the real one, it's just a demo one. And you set up your shipping over here so shipping to the US whoops you gotta change your location here Canada I don't know why it's saying that if it gives you that postal code error just put nothing because if you don't have a zip code you have postal code because you're in Canada And uh, ch choose a choose five. Typically, when you're mailing stuff from Canada to US, even if it's like a fairly big package, it's a five to ten business days. And because I'm just shipping cards, I just do free shipping. It's going to cost me like a dollar. If you're shipping things that are a bit heavier, like books, uh, like medium sized items, like books or textbooks, it's going to be around fifteen to twenty dollars for a decent sized box of things it's around 30 if you're really not sure just go to your post office and get a quote from them otherwise use the method of just selling like collectible cards go to the hobby store buy, buy a pack of Yu-Gi-Oh cards or magic cards or whatever cards and just do free shipping these these if you do this like one cent free shipping like no matter which card that you have listed you it's gonna sell and if you ship it fast to the, to the buyer, they're going to give you positive feedback. So just to go through what you need here, you just need a title, just a condition, a gallery image, describe the item. Again, we're just trying to get fast sales, so one cent. You want the auction to last seven days. So if you can do shorter, but seven I find is nice. Do the free shipping. Handling time, select how long it'll take you to ship. Um, because I have on all the envelopes and stuff, it, it'll take me a day, but it's okay to put two days, even three days. It's okay. Usually two days is the, um, is the sweet spot. If you do one or a same day, it says fast and free on your item, but don't, don't worry too much about that. If you're just selling stuff around your house, you can put two days. So let's just put two days because you know, sometimes stuff happens, but you ideally you want to push it out. In one day, in 24 hours, so that you can, so that the person will get the item really fast, and they'll give you that feedback. And the package details and weight, you don't have to fill this out. It's not a necessity. Now you want to set a return policy. The default is all returns are accepted, and typically it's best to just leave it as you return uh, accepting returns. It intrigues people to buy your items more and gives them less of a risk to buy it. 
As long as there's no problems, there shouldn't be any problems with people returning the items as well. And once that is all set, you can click continue. Now, if it's your first time selling, eBay's going to ask you for some information. I'm not going to fill out the information because, once again, this is just a demo account, but it'll ask you just here to review this. This is standard, but when you hit continue, it's going to ask you for to sign in and confirm something. So again, here's these are steps to complete before you list your first item. So it's going to ask you to confirm your phone number and it's going to ask you how do you like to pay your eBay fees. Because eBay fees, they take 10%. You want to link your PayPal to your eBay so they can take the eBay fees off your PayPal because you'll get money through your PayPal and eBay can take the fees from the PayPal instead of you like having to pay through your bank or your credit card and you having money in PayPal. You might as well pay them with your PayPal money because the money is already in there. So I'm not going to do these steps but I'll just show you. So you can just hit continue. Uh, it'll ask you for your phone number. You can click call me now. They'll call you with a pin and just enter the pin here and you hit continue and you'll have your first item listed so that's what you want to do as a requirement just list random things and just try to get rid of whatever you have around your house to get the initial feedback so that you have a better standing with ebay and also other other buyers will want to do more business with you too because right now when you first open your account you're going to have like nothing some people might get sketched out to buy from you Especially if it's like if your account has not been uh, open for that long. But if they see even one feedback, they'll be like, oh, okay. Like, it gives them that proof that you're not like a scammer. You're actually going to deliver the items that you have. But again, it's not entirely necessary for you to even have feedback. What eBay just likes to see is that you actually have sold items and have not received a complaint. So you just want to build a history with eBay as well. That's important so that they don't suspend you or ban you. So after you do that, you might be asking uh, how much can I make with this how much does this all cost to set up and how long will it take well I can only exp speak from personal experience again it took me about a month for things to really get started my first sale came in two weeks but <laughs> you're not gonna make too much money on each item because you're just making the difference between Amazon and eBay you are probably gonna make truthfully on most items like four dollars that's the average three to four dollars you're gonna make per item now what you want to do is do a high volume of sales so in drop shipping you don't want to do um, you're not doing high margins this is not what you're doing you're doing high volume so you're doing those three to four dollars of sales but if you do ten of those a day that's uh, that's thirty to forty dollars if you do a hundred a day that's 300 to 400 dollars a day so in this business it's not about margins it's about volume this is volume based business the best way to think about it is like a convenience store convenience stores will make maybe a dollar or two off each item but they sell like a lot every day and that that money adds up Especially when you're doing high volumes. When you've got like a thousand, two thousand items listed on your eBay store, you're selling like fifty a day, it's it's gonna add up. That's where your money comes in, is just doing the volume of sales as opposed to trying to like make the most margins. So don't don't worry too much about making as much margins as you can. Just focus on getting a lot of items listed as quickly as possible. Now, because there's nothing listed on here, you can't see the listing limit, but in the beginning eBay gives you a ten item, one thousand dollar listing limit what does that mean it means you can list only 10 items and you can only sell a thousand dollars worth total per month this is why we want to sell random things and get that feedback because once you get feedback every month eBay will I think they now triple your limit as long as you get good feedback so the next month you can list 30 items worth 3,000 total and then the third month will be 90 items, 9,000, and your store will start to grow exponentially. Once again, this is you should really look at this as a business. It's not like some, it's not like Vima. Okay, you can't 
get in this and get a BMW in six months. You, it's gonna take some time. But there's something you can do part time, you know, an hour a day, and you can make some decent money off of it. So what are the expectations going into this? How much can I make? From my personal experience, when I had 200 listings, I was making about $200 monthly. But the thing with this business is it starts to scale. So when I had 300 listings, I was making $500. The reason why is the more listings you have on your store, the more people are going to come to your store. It's You're attracting more people. So it just starts to snowball. Let's say you have a have like a let's say you only have like ten items. Okay, there's ten items. There's ten different items that can lead to your store. Let's say you have two hundred items. Okay, there's two hundred items that'll bring traffic to your store. Your store, my store, Roarma. But if you have three hundred items, then now there's three hundred items that bring you people to your store. Maybe someone comes through your item from like a roll of toilet paper, but then they see like a, a skateboard they want to buy on, from your store. So the the traffic becomes like a snowball effect it starts to build and build okay, let me draw it out actually so it's like at first you have a little snowball and it doesn't really go that fast but then you have a bigger snowball it starts going really fast and then you have a humongous snowball and now you're just making a lot of money so all your listings are like a snowball effect each listing will bring exponential traffic to your eBay store so you just want to do a lot a lot of listings that's what you want to focus on early on in the business and how much will it cost it, it depends because now you're gonna have to be putting up money to buy the items once it sells right so I would I would recommend you have some money maybe like a thousand dollars you don't need a lot to be honest though you can I, I started off doing this with like three hundred dollars maybe and uh, eventually started that $300 builds up and it's like a snowball too you've got you got maybe like 50 bucks when you start off okay 50 is really unrealistically low but let's say you got your $500 here then it becomes a thousand the next month and then it becomes 10,000 so you do need some starting capital to buy the items so list items you can actually afford to buy once it sells. That's also key. But don't worry too much. Most items you list will be around the $50, $70 range max. It's it's not going to be a huge amount of money. Plus you're making it back with the uh, your customer paying you. Remember, you're spending money to make money. So don't be so stingy. And uh, th think of the long term. Now setting it up, you've got your, you got your paper eBay set up, you got PayPal set up and linked up, you got some random items that you're selling for feedback, everything's looking good. Maybe about a month will pass and they'll bump up your uh, selling limit and now you're ready to start listing. So once once you sell, I would say, uh, to be safe, maybe five random items, but I've even done it with selling one ran random item. But the rule of thumb is usually five, so you sell five. You'll usually have a one or two feedback by then. Once you have that five, you can actually begin the process of drop shipping, which is finding items on eBay that you can get from Amazon and then listing it and selling it. So this is where the real fun actually starts. So how do we find these items? Well, first you just go on Amazon and you just type random randomly. Okay, brown. QE brown shoe polish. Okay, so there's this shoe polish here. We want to search on eBay and see if it's selling for hire. See if anyone's selling for hire. Alright, let's go here. Oh, it looks like... Oh, this is eBay.ca. Let's jump on eBay.com. Okay, looks like this guy's selling for $6. Here it's... Oops, here it's 539. Now we also want to calculate fees because eBay and PayPal take a they take a 13% fee. We want to look for items that even after the fees they're still breaking even. So the easiest way to calculate this is times the uh, the gross sale amount. So let's say seven dollars and six 
six cents times it by 0.87 so that's 87 percent that's minus the 13 percent and you'll get the amount of money you'll be left with after paying your fees so 7.06 times 0.87 oops 7.06 times 0.87 so this in this case you've got six dollars and fourteen cents this sells for 539 so you're making about minus 539 so you're making about uh, 75 cents on this one now the, the the key is not even how much this guy is making off this what you want to actually do is now that you know this guy is someone who probably drop ships he's making about it's not a huge amount of money okay it's 75 cents but Clearly, he is dropshipping because this is almost exactly the same as this. He's got it listed for $7, so he would have like a little profit. Now, what the, the real trick is, you're not looking for items right away through this method of finding something and searching it up. You're actually looking for people who are also dropshipping and seeing their history of what's sold. So, let me, let me just make this more clear for you. So, this guy's making money doing this. He's making $0.75. Cents. So you want to go on to his, to his account, and it looks like he is drop shipping. You see all these, you see these uh, Amazon style listings, the item with the white background, like you would see on Amazon. So these are several clues that yes, this guy is is drop shipping. Now you want to go to his sold listings. This will give you a, a solid history and track record of items that are actually selling. Now you see the item O2 oh, Cool. You want to see if this sold item. Is available on Amazon. Let's look it up. Yes, it is. So it's about seven sixty nine. Ten fifty one. Nine fourteen. So yeah, you would make about two dollars. So there you go. You got your first item right there. You would just go here. You would go to sell. And you can just start listing this item. You can uh, you can just take the, the description, portable fans. Um, I usually just take the description here. Oh, new. Put this here, and put this description here. I just leave that blank. Just get the uh, picture of this. Just to speed it up, I'm just going to take this first picture only. But you you want to get every single picture, all the pictures you can. It increases the sales. It increases your conversion. So you would normally get all these four pictures. Post it up. There you go. It's your first listing. You go to fixed price. Now you want to do a fixed price for items you're drop shipping because obviously you don't want to auction it. And now this guy is selling for ten fifty one. So we're gonna slightly undercut him to forty nine. So we're like two cents off. But hey, if two people see this guy's listing and my listing, they're gonna want to buy it. As well, you want to list it for thirty days, and you only want to list one quantity. Looks like this is not uh, letting me change. Sometimes it, it just lags. There you go. So 30 days, one. Um, now for your item location, because you are because Amazon will ship from the U.S., you want to change this to United States. You can just put. I'll just randomly put New York. And now you'll be able to use economy shipping. It'll give you the shipping options that are available in the US to US residents. So I usually just do economy shipping to be safe. Typically it tells you how, lo how long the uh, shipping is. So that that's pretty much the process. You just, to reiterate, we didn't start off with the fan. We started off with this Kiwi polish. We found this guy's store. We've seen that he's selling this deluxe misting fan or whatever we searched it up on Amazon we found it for cheaper and we listed it 
So we have the listing here, the description, the uh, buy it now, and uh, the, the shipping. Oh, and you also want to put free shipping because Amazon gives free shipping. So put free shipping, set your handling time to about a day since you know you, you just have to basically type in the person's order when you actually buy it. I mean their address when you buy it so it's not like you have to go to the post office or anything. And then you just uh, list the item. Now in the description here, just to make things more appealing, I like to say 14 day returns as well there may be cases where you sell an item and it sells out on Amazon so this is a good uh, backup measure you say please send me your zip code if after payment to confirm US. Now Amazon.com only ships to the US so you want to write only shipping to the US. Make sure your international shipping service is off. By default it's off. If You, you can click this and add it. Or actually I think it's this one and add it but it'll show you um, it'll give you options but right now in the beginning you just want to focus on selling and buying from the US. It's, just, it's the biggest market and it, it'll help you focus your efforts now one thing though, you see this item is um, it's free shipping for Prime when this is an add-on item. So this, this qualifies for free shipping over $24. So this actually would not be an item that you probably want to list because you have to spend $25 to, to get free shipping on it. And you also need Prime. Now what is Prime? Prime is you pay $99 a, a month on Amazon and you get free shipping on almost every item. Usually, if we go here, items that ha qualify for free shipping on Amazon have to be over $50. So let's say, let's go to um, Home and Kitchen, find something that's over $50. It'll say free shipping. Uh, let's go to Bedroom Furniture, and let's click Dressers. Click on this dresser. Now you see um, $79. We add it to the cart. I don't know if this one. Oops. Let's return to cart. Yeah, so this one qualifies because it's over $50. If we put in something that's under, like let's go find the book, it's going to say only qualifies if you have Prime or if you're spending over $50. Let's go to the books. Sure, I don't give a damn. The cart. The cart. Uh, let me see. Oh, it actually doesn't say. But I, you can see here it says free prime shipping. So this is different from free shipping. Free prime shipping means if you have a prime membership on Amazon then you are able to get this for free free shipping but if you do not the let me log out of my account here and it should say uh, do we have to create a new one am i logged out now yeah i'm logged out okay let's go to books Sure, sitting in my box. There we go. So you see free shipping on orders with at least $25 worth. Because this is a, not a Prime account, once you go to our cart, it'll tell you. This is eligible for free shipping, but it says here you need to add $19 worth of books. So what does this mean for you? So shipping on Amazon. You want to make sure that obviously you're calculating the shipping costs when you're calculating how much money you'll make. So typically, I think it's $25 is free shipping on books in certain categories, but most of this other site, most of the department, other departments is $49 free shipping. As well, there's free prime shipping, which means if you pay the $99 
a year for the membership, you get access to free shipping without having to spend $25 or $49 on, on Prime eligible items. So make sure that you are on the lookout for things like this. So let's see. See, items here are less than $25, so you would need Prime to get free shipping on these. But let's uh, look if we can find something that's over the $50 mark. Uh, let's look up blue. Okay. Let's look up this microphone. Oh, no one's actually selling it. That's weird. Alright, let's try looking up. Oh, we're searching this guy's store. So let's go on the main site. Search this. Okay, 63, 72. Okay, so this guy's selling for 137. He's clearly drop shipping. Some of these other guys may actually just be wholesalers, just posting on eBay, but this guy's drop shipping, 137. He's making decent money off this. Let's go on his site. There we see his site. See, he's doing the same thing, selling random items for feedback, but he's got his regular drop shipping items. And, uh, go to his items for sale and see his sold listings. Here, now we have a bunch of items here that are over fifty dollars so you won't even need prime to uh to um get the free shipping like this black decker let's see if this is on prime or sorry amazon yeah here you go so it's fifty one dollars this qualifies for free shipping you see how it's not prime shipping it just says free shipping and he's selling it for seventy nine ninety nine .87, so 61 so you're making good money on this you're making ten dollars on this uh, hand vacuum if you list it sometimes if you click here you see where it says new you can actually even get it for cheaper you see how different sellers on Amazon sell it for different prices so that's also another way to um, uh, save some money it doesn't work all the time but it's sometimes worth it to look there so you see that you've got an item it's free shipping you don't have to pay for prime and you're making ten dollars on the item let's see maybe this one this one looks like it's just some random stuff that he has or she has but, uh, let's see if this also will work yeah this one it seems like it's just a wholesale item so that's way too expensive but um, this right here is something perfect that you could list it's completely free shipping uh, you see all the people seem to be doing the same thing but you would price yours lower. You would price it a bit lower, like seventy, maybe seventy dollars, and it's been proven to sell, right? You've you've seen that people are willing to pay seventy seventy dollars ninety nine cents. So you could just list this for seventy dollars and fifty cents, and uh, get get sales. This is what you do all day long, pretty much. You just let's look up something else. Black. Uh, probably not some like this, but some like this. You wanna you wanna list items that it's there's no real market value like a book like or sorry a DVD like Black Mass there's gonna be a market set market value for it or like Men in Black uh, movie you know there's gonna be a certain range that people are willing to pay for but something like this uh, lithium string I don't even know what this is it's kind of like the average person wouldn't really know what to calculate a price I don't even know what this is but yeah you not not everyone knows what a lithium thingy, lithium string trimmer is worth. So you're making that difference between Amazon and eBay. So look it up. Oh, this guy's making a lot of money on this. 172. He's actually sold one. So you could actually list this as well. See how it's sold? So there's actually a track record of this selling. So you could you could list that. Uh, also be careful sometimes. You might see that this is 99 but the one that they're listing on eBay is actually like a variation like this one. So just be extra careful with that as well. But we can see this one is $99 here but 172 and he sold one. So there's there's some proof here that it's working. So we want to, you could list this one right away and also look for some more items on this guy's store. Go to his sold listings and uh, once again because we don't have Prime, you want to look for things that will qualify for free shipping. 
I think this would actually. So let's look it up. It's got prime shipping, but if you click. Oh, yeah, so this one would not count. But you just keep looking, keep looking, look for something that is a bit higher price range. Might be a dud on this guy's store. I think you might be able to. S Yo, price. Oh, here we go. You can just do the highest price. Okay, this definitely will be half free shipping, I'm sure. It's pretty expensive. Let me just close these other tabs. Yeah, we'll just close that. 195. Yeah, so this has free shipping. He's selling for 239. I don't know if he's actually making money on this, but let's just do a quick calculation times point. Oops. Two. Ah, he's making like. How much money is that? Thirteen dollars. So that's maybe something I would not list. I usually like to get ten percent on my money, but uh, thirteen. If you're making thirteen dollars, one ninety-five divided by thirteen. Making fifteen percent. That's not too bad. I, I think I did the math wrong there. Thirteen point five. You're making six percent, so you're not making um. 10% on it, I, I wouldn't list it, but you could, you could make $13 off that. This is a brand name item, so I wouldn't list this on this new account, it's kind of risky. This though, it is an electronic, but this would be something that's not necessarily brand name. Same with this, this is electronic too, but it's like a, it's like a fridge, so it's not something eBay would think is risky. You go, you've got to really use your head here. It's kind of common sense though, like... Just like Microsoft stuff on a new account, eBay's gonna be a little freaked out by that. But definitely something like this, a fridge, and even this uh, robot cleaner, I would say is fairly safe. If you feel risky, then don't do it. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see it as a big, big risk to list this at least. And you would make, you know, your thirteen dollars on it. Let's see this cart, even this cart, it's one twelve and free shipping, and he's selling it for one fifty seven. Let's take out the calculator. Oops. So one thirty-seven. He's making about twenty dollars on these when he sells them, and that's the whole process. That's all you do. You, this is probably another one. So two eighty-three and his free shipping. Yes, two eighty-three. He's selling for. 377. So 28. This is yeah, you're making 40 bucks. So that that's pretty much it. You just go through here and uh, take the items that uh, you could sell as well. Just uh, slightly undercut this person. Now, um, typically you don't want to stay on one person for too long, just because. First off. If he notices this guy happy times forever, that all of a sudden these items that we're selling are not selling, and then he finds, does a quick search and finds you're selling the same stuff, um, could just start a price war where both of you are just trying to undercut each other, and that's not that great. Uh, it's probably better just for you to take maybe like 10 items, I'd say, 10, 10, I mean this guy has a lot of feedback, so he's selling a lot of different stuff. So yeah, it would be fair to take like 10, 20 items from him. And uh, move on to another person. But again, use your discretion, right? You don't want to be, you know, just... It's also a matter of, like, spreading your risk. You, These items have sold in the past, but you never know. So you want to also look for other um, sellers. And just rinse and repeat that process. Find these items. Search on Amazon. Can I make a profit? If yes, list the item. Make sure you get free shipping on the item. So around 50 items that are around uh, over a hundred not sorry hundred fifty dollars will have a free shipping so like things like this 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 looks good that 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 you could just search all these items up and list the ones that are making money things like this you want to skip in the beginning this uh, computer screen and that's the whole process you just keep you just do that all day uh, and yeah eventually after a month you'll have a decent sized store 
wood items that are making you like ten dollars here, five dollars there, and it'll start snowballing. That's pretty much it. That's all you need to get started. It's a really, really, really simple business model. Just listing items. Drop your um. Just finding items that are selling on eBay and then using Amazon as basically your supplier and making a difference, making, uh, sorry, the difference, and I guess also making a difference, getting people items for a bit cheaper than they would normally buy for. And that's the whole webinar. I'll just stay for like 15 minutes and take questions. So anybody have questions? Okay, wow, everyone's good. Okay. So that's it. Thanks for spending your Saturday afternoon to watch this. Uh, try it out. It's a really good way to make part-time money. And if you want to take it as far as you want to take it, you can make some good, you know, long-term, good, good money with this as long as you just stick with the process. So again, thanks for coming out and uh, have a good day, everybody.